Okay, protein. Uh, you guys know a lot about protein. You know, important for everything. Uh, I don't want to go too much in detail because I know that you, you know, we we all learn about protein. One thing I want to show you. This is was a study which was published in a pediatric, uh, you know, U.S. pediatric journal. And what they found. Uh, this is a white Caucasian baby. Okay, uh, and this is Indian child, Indian baby. Okay, what they did? They did the body composition. Of uh, and compared American baby with versus Indian baby, and they found that Indian baby's average was about two point seven kg, and white Caucasian babies about three point five kg. Okay, and now look at the, if you look at the body composition, this is your fat. Okay, now what should be more in human being, fat or protein or muscle? Obviously muscle, right? We want more muscle mass. We don't want too much fat, right? Look at look at. White Caucasian baby muscle mass, twenty percent muscle mass. Ours ten percent. Their fat ten percent. Ours is fat twenty percent. Viscera means organs. Organs should be big, right? Viscera twenty percent. Ours ten percent. Do you see where we are going wrong? And we are small. Means fat doesn't have much weight. Muscle has weight, right? We don't have muscle. Now, when you when you at birth, when you have this kind of body composition, what happens? When this child grows up, what's going to happen now? The children are going to get metabolic syndrome because we don't have muscle mass. Lean mass is important, right? To prevent your, uh, to improve your insulin sensitivity, right? And that's why we have something called developmental origin of health and diseases. Very beautiful uh, theory hypothesis. You must learn. It, they have thousands of uh, articles coming out, scientific articles that what happens when. When you don't have a proper environment, when the child is developing in the womb, and just postnatal development, when you don't have those good development, what happens to this? All these babies, uh, when they grow up, you know, they basically have, uh, you know, <clears throat> problems like blood pressure, diabetes, you know, uh, insulin resistance, all that. Uh, and what are the critical window? Preconception. Okay. Fetal period and early postnatal period. So important that you take care of this three period, and the children will not have metabolic syndrome. Okay, the food high in protein, we all know. Uh, please remember your complete protein, incomplete protein. Your all, I always recommend complete protein if mother is non-veg. If she is a vegetarian, I still try to kind of convince her to have at least eggs. You know, much better quality, and it is very high in protein. Your cholesterol, which is important for your myelination, important for brain. Cholesterol is really important for brain development for the child. Okay, uh, and if she's not eating eggs, I would definitely recommend dairy products. If you know, if you can manage. Uh, but another thing, what we can do in uh, rural area, tribal area, please go ahead and give them seeds. Okay, now a lot of these mothers they grow pumpkin or they grow cucumber, they grow all these things, but you know they don't eat those seeds. So it's important that you know we teach them how to make those to dry it, to roast it, and you know they can just remove the uh, covering and they can have seeds. Some of the vegetables are high in protein too, but not so much. Uh, they also have phytic acids, phytates. So, but you know spinach, cauliflower, some of them nuts, uh, legumes are good. Your the peanuts are good, you know. I really prefer beans. Uh, beans are extremely good in protein, so I like to sprout them, cook them, and then have it probably with millets. I don't like too much of rice and wheat. We need to come out of this right in right rice and wheat obsession, really. Okay, nuts are good. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on the importance of protein. In this tutorial, we will learn about benefits of protein for our body, effects of its deficiency, requirements at different age groups, food sources. Protein is an essential macronutrient required by our body. It is made up of 22 amino acids. Out of 22, Nine amino acids are essential. These are not made by our body. Hence, 
they have to be taken through food remaining 13 are made by the body i will briefly tell you about amino acids amino acids are organic compounds that combine to form proteins lysine leucine histidine methionine tryptophan are a few amino acids proteins are divided into two types they are complete proteins and incomplete proteins the difference between them is based on the type of amino acids present in food complete proteins are those which contain all the nine essential amino acids all non vegetarian foods are complete proteins for example chicken eggs fish and meat likewise milk and milk products are also a source of complete proteins incomplete proteins have inadequate amounts of one or more essential amino acids most vegetarian foods are incomplete proteins for example pulses grains nuts and seeds among all these soya bean is one of the best vegetarian source of protein benefits of protein include growth repair and maintenance of muscle tissues it also controls blood sugar levels and builds a stronger immune system protein rich food reduces our cravings and keeps us full for a longer time this also helps in weight management aid in digestion and breaking down of toxins are other two functions it also helps in carrying signals to and fro the brain transporting and storage of nutrients in the body also requires protein let us understand the signs and symptoms of protein deficiency now one of the signs of protein deficiency is diminished growth of the fetus deficiency in children can lead to wasting and stunting this may result in low body weight in such conditions children are at a risk of developing various infections due to poor growth a child's brain development can also get affected in the long term poorly grown children are at a risk of developing diabetes they may also develop hypertension when they grow up in adults protein deficiency leads to loss of muscle mass they may also feel tired weak and become prone to infections wrinkling of skin and hair fall are other examples various age groups have different daily requirements protein requirements advised in this tutorial are as per the field observations for 0 to 12 month old babies it is 1 to 2 grams per kg body weight 16 grams of protein for 1 to 3 years old children is required 20 grams for 4 to 6 year old children 29 grams is advised for 7 to 9 year old children 40 grams for 10 to 12 year old children 52 to 62 grams is suggested for adolescents for pregnant women it is 78 grams for lactating mothers 68 to 74 grams is advised for adults protein requirement also depends on their physical activity activity is categorized as sedentary moderate and heavy sedentary activity includes teaching tailoring 
data entry and call center jobs. People doing desk jobs also come under sedentary activity. Moderate activity includes agriculture labor, house help, mason and driver. Heavy activity includes stone cutter, wood cutter, athlete and mine worker. Sedentary workers require 1 gram protein per kg ideal body weight. Ideal body weight is optimum weight that is healthy for a person. Moderate workers require 1.2 gram protein per kg ideal body weight. Heavy workers require 1.5 grams protein per kg ideal body weight. Let us understand this with an example. A 55 kilograms moderate working woman's protein requirement would be 66 grams. If the same woman is doing heavy work, she will need 82 grams. It is advised to include protein-rich food in your daily diet. Such foods should be given from 6 months of age. Let's take a look at the protein content of some of the food sources. One whole egg has around 7 grams of protein. 100 grams of boneless chicken has about 19 grams of protein. Similarly, 100 grams of fish has around 20 grams protein. 250 milliliters of cow's milk has approximately 8 grams. Curd made of 250 milliliters of cow's milk has nearly 8 grams. 45 grams of paneer made from cow's milk has about 8 grams of protein. 20 grams of nuts and seeds have nearly 4 grams. Approximately 11 grams of protein is present in 30 grams of raw soya beans. Nearly 5 grams of protein is present in 30 grams of other raw beans. 30 grams of uncooked pulses have approximately 4 grams protein. 30 grams of raw milled rice has around 2 grams. 30 grams of raw foxtail millet has nearly 4 grams protein. 1 chapati made out of 30 grams wheat flour has 3 grams of protein. Sorghum and pearl millet chapati also has around 3 grams of protein. 4 grams of protein is present in 1 missi roti. Missi roti is made with equal ratio of gram flour and wheat flour. Protein from non-vegetarian food is absorbed better than vegetarian food. It is because non-vegetarian foods have complete proteins. Complete proteins contain all the essential amino acids. Thus, the quality of protein in the non-veg food is better than vegetarian food. Quality of protein is checked by the DIAAS method. DIAAS is Digestible Indispensable Amino Acid Score. It is the ratio of digestible amino acid in food and the amino acid required. The score is given from 0 to 1. 1 being the highest and 0 being the lowest. Let us look at the digestibility score for a few food items. Egg has a 1.18 digestibility score. Whole milk has 1.32. Peas have 0 0.64. While chickpeas have 
0.66 cooked rice has 0.59 wheat has 0.43 roasted peanuts also have a score of 0.43 as discussed earlier vegetarian sources are incomplete proteins cereals are low in lysine and pulses are low in methionine eating them together will compensate for the insufficiency of amino acids combining cereal and pulses improves the protein quality this is called the complementary action of proteins it is recommended to eat different food groups in various combinations combining of food groups helps to get different essential amino acids combining pulses and grains with milk products improves the protein quality the missing amino acids in grains and pulses are compensated by milk products let us look at some food items prepared with these combinations millet khichdi with raita kadhi rice and paneer paratha are a few examples thali peet with curd and kidney beans rice with curd are other examples combining cereal or millet with non veg food also improves the protein quality i will tell you some recipes that can be prepared using this combination they include millet chicken pulao egg dosa and chicken millet roti wrap egg rice meat stuffed paratha ragi ball and chicken curry are other examples apart from these combinations we can combine other food groups as well curd rice spinach paneer curry coconut curd chutney are some examples using pastes of nuts and seeds in curries also improves the protein quality include these food items in your daily diet for good health this brings us to the end of this tutorial welcome to the spoken tutorial on protein rich vegetarian recipes in this tutorial we will learn about benefits of protein some vegetarian recipes rich in protein Protein helps in growth, repair and maintenance of muscle tissues. It is also responsible for controlling blood sugar levels. The importance of protein has been explained in detail in another tutorial. Please visit our website for this tutorial. Let us look at the vegetarian sources of protein. Milk and milk products, pulses, nuts and seeds are good sources of protein now let us see some protein rich vegetarian recipes our first recipe is paneer masala to make this recipe you will need 70 grams or half cup paneer 70 grams or half cup of curd 1 tablespoon roasted gram flour you will also need 1 teaspoon red chili powder Half teaspoon turmeric powder, half teaspoon curry leaves powder, half teaspoon garam masala powder, one teaspoon oil or ghee, salt to taste. Procedure: Whisk the curd in a bowl until smooth. Add the spices, salt, curry leaves powder, and gram flour. Mix everything again. To this add paneer pieces and mix well. Cover the bowl with a lid and leave it for 30 minutes. Heat 1 teaspoon oil or ghee in a pan. Add the paneer along with curd mixture. To this add half glass of water. Cook this for 2 to 5 minutes till the mixture thickens. Paneer masala is ready. Half bowl of paneer masala has 22 grams of protein. 
Next recipe is green gram curry. To make this recipe, you will need 100 grams or 3 fourth cup of curd, 30 grams or 1 fourth cup sprouted green gram, 1 fourth cup washed and chopped coriander leaves, 4 teaspoons gram flour, half teaspoon turmeric powder, 1 teaspoon red chilli powder. You will also need half teaspoon mustard seeds, half teaspoon cumin seeds, 1 green chilli, 1 teaspoon oil, 4 to 5 curry leaves and salt to taste. I will now explain the procedure. We will first start with sprouting. Soak green gram in water overnight. Drain it in the morning and tie them in a clean muslin cloth. Leave them in a warm place to germinate for one day until sprouts appear. Grind the sprouts and green chilli into a coarse paste using a mixer. If mixer is not available, you can use a stone grinder. Collect this paste in a bowl. Add coriander leaves, 2 teaspoons of gram flour and salt and mix well. Make small balls of the paste and place on a steaming plate. Steam these in a steamer for 6 to 8 minutes. Allow the steamed balls to cool. To make the curd curry, whisk the curd in a bowl. Add 2 teaspoons of gram flour and spices. And mix well to combine everything. Add 1 cup of water. Mix again and keep this mixture aside. Heat oil in a pan and add mustard and cumin seeds. Once they start to crackle, add curry leaves and curd mixture. Cook this on a medium flame. Keep stirring in between until the mixture starts to thicken. Once the mixture thickens, add the steamed balls and cook for 1 minute. Green gram curry is ready. Half bowl of this curry has around 17 grams of protein. The third recipe is sorghum and soya dosa with sesame seeds mix. To make this recipe, you will need 1 and half tablespoons of soya bean, 2 teaspoons of sorghum, 2 teaspoons of split black gram and 1 teaspoon fenugreek seeds. To make the sesame seeds mix, you will need 2 teaspoons roasted Bengal gram, 2 teaspoons split black gram, 2 teaspoons sesame seeds, 2 dry red chilies, 1 sprig curry leaves and salt to taste. You will also need 1 teaspoon oil or ghee. Procedure Wash sorghum, split black gram, soya beans and soak them in water for 8 hours. Soak fenugreek seeds as well in the same vessel. After 8 hours, grind them into a smooth paste. Transfer this into a bowl. Keep this bowl in a warm place to ferment for 7 to 8 hours. Meanwhile, heat a pan and dry roast red chilies and curry leaves till crisp. Keep them aside to cool. In the same pan, roast split Bengal gram, black gram and sesame seeds. Roast them until they turn light brown in colour. Keep this aside to cool. Once cooled, grind them into a fine powder. We will use this later. Once the batter is fermented, add salt and mix well. Heat oil or ghee in a pan and pour the batter and spread it evenly. Once the dosa is partially cooked, add 2 teaspoons of prepared powder. Cover with the lid until dosa is cooked. Sorghum and soya dosa is ready. Two dosas have around 17 grams of protein. The next recipe is Bengal gram cutlets. To make this recipe, you will need 50 grams Bengal gram sprouts, 40 grams or 1 and half tablespoon curd, 1 small shredded carrot, 1 small onion finely chopped, 
15 grams or 1 tablespoon roasted gram flour and 20 grams sesame seeds. You will also require half teaspoon turmeric powder, 1 teaspoon chilli powder, 1 teaspoon ginger garlic paste, 2 teaspoon oil or ghee and salt to taste. Procedure Pressure cook Bengal gram sprouts until 3 whistles. Keep it aside until the pressure is released. Take the cooled Bengal gram sprouts in a bowl and mash them well. To this add onion, carrot and roasted gram flour and mix well. Now add spices, salt, ginger garlic paste and curd. Mix all the ingredients and make 4 balls out of it. Flatten the balls into cutlets. Coat these cutlets with sesame seeds and keep it aside. Heat oil or ghee in a pan. Shallow fry the cutlets until both sides turn golden brown in color. Bengal gram cutlets are ready. 4 cutlets have 17 grams of protein. Grains and pulses have incomplete proteins. Pulses are low in methionine and grains are low in lysine. Therefore, different food groups have been combined to prepare these recipes. Eating them together will compensate for the insufficient amino acids in food. This is called complementary action of protein. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Welcome to the Spoken Tutorial on Protein-Rich Non-Vegetarian Recipes. In this tutorial, we will learn some non-vegetarian recipes rich in protein. Protein helps in growth, repair and maintenance of muscle tissues. It is responsible for controlling blood sugar levels. We also need it for stronger immunity. The importance of protein in our body has been explained in another tutorial. Please visit our website for this tutorial. Now let us learn to prepare some protein rich recipes. However, before cooking non-veg food items, apply lime juice or curd or tamarind paste. It should be applied for 1 hour before cooking. Herbs like Ginger garlic paste and spices like turmeric can also be added. This helps to add flavor and make the meat tender. I will begin with our first recipe which is chicken curry. To prepare this recipe you will need 100 grams or 4 pieces of boneless chicken, 50 grams or half bowl curd, 1 medium sized chopped onion, 1 teaspoon ginger garlic paste and a handful washed coriander leaves. Spices needed are 1 teaspoon red chilli powder, half teaspoon turmeric powder and 1 teaspoon garam masala powder. You will also need 1 teaspoon oil or ghee and salt to taste. Procedure Wash and clean the chicken. Marinate the chicken with some salt and keep it aside for 20 minutes. In a pan, heat 1 teaspoon of oil or ghee. Add onions and saute till they turn golden brown. Add ginger garlic paste and saute until raw smell is gone. To this, add chicken and cook it for a few minutes. Now, add spices and salt. Cook this for 2 minutes. Meanwhile, Whisk the curd until smooth. Then add the curd to the chicken and mix well. Now add half cup of water. Close the pan with the lid and cook until the chicken is cooked. In the end add garam masala and coriander leaves. Cook again on a low flame for 1 minute. Chicken curry is ready. One bowl of this chicken curry has around 20 grams of protein. The second recipe is omelette curry. To prepare this recipe, you will need 2 eggs, 1 medium chopped onion, 1 medium chopped tomato, 2 tablespoons grated fresh coconut, 1 tablespoon roasted peanuts, 
half lemon size soaked tamarind ball and handful of washed and chopped coriander leaves spices needed are half teaspoon turmeric powder two dried whole red chilies and 1 teaspoon garam masala powder you will also need 2 teaspoons oil or ghee and salt to taste procedure heat a pan and dry roast coconut and red chilies on medium flame roast them until aroma is released allow them to cool grind them into a paste by adding roasted peanuts and tamarind add water to make a smooth paste however before grinding make sure to remove the seeds of the tamarind keep this paste aside for later use in a pan heat 1 teaspoon of oil or ghee add onion and saute them until the onion turns golden brown to this add the chopped tomatoes and cook until the tomatoes turn soft add turmeric powder salt and mix well now add the ground paste and half cup water cook this for 5 minutes meanwhile we will start to make the omelet to make the omelet beat two eggs in a bowl with some salt as per taste add coriander leaves and mix well again heat half teaspoon oil or ghee in a pan and add the beaten eggs flip and cook on both sides on medium flame until done Cut the omelet into long pieces and add it to the curry and mix well. Lastly, add the garam masala powder and cook again for 2 minutes. Omelet curry is done. Half bowl of omelet curry has around 16 grams of protein. The next recipe is dry shrimp stir fry. Please note that shrimps should not be given to less than 1 year old children. Let us look at the ingredients required to make this recipe. 25 g or half bowl of dry shrimp, 1 tablespoon roasted sesame seed powder, half medium sized onion and half medium sized tomato. Spices needed are half teaspoon turmeric powder, 1 teaspoon chili powder and half teaspoon garam masala powder. You will also need 1 teaspoon oil or ghee. and salt to taste procedure let us begin with preparing the sesame seed powder heat a pan and dry roast two tablespoons of sesame seeds until they splutter allow the sesame seeds to cool and grind it into a fine powder keep this aside for later use next wash and soak the shrimps in water for 20 minutes if the dried shrimps have head and tail please remove them before washing meanwhile heat oil or ghee in a pan and add chopped onions saute until onions turn light golden then add tomato spices and salt mix well and cook until the tomatoes become soft strain the dried shrimp in a sieve for a few minutes add this to the pan and mix well close the pan with a lid and cook for 5 to 6 minutes in the end add the sesame seed powder and cook again for 5 to 10 seconds dried shrimp stir fry is ready half bowl of dried shrimp stir fry has around 18 grams of protein the next recipe is mutton cutlet to prepare this cutlet you will need 100 grams of washed boneless mutton 2 tablespoons of soaked split bengal gram 1 fourth sliced onion 1 teaspoon ginger garlic paste whole spices required are 2 to 3 black pepper 2 cloves 1 to 2 pods of cardamom and half inch of cinnamon you will also require half teaspoon turmeric powder half teaspoon coriander powder and half teaspoon chili powder You will also need 2 teaspoons of oil or ghee and salt as per taste. Procedure: Put the mutton pieces in a pressure cooker. Add all the ingredients in it except the oil. Mix everything well. Then add 1 glass of water. Pressure cook it for about 15 minutes. Allow the pressure to be released. Let the mixture cool. From the mixture, separate out the whole spices. 
then mash the mixture using a big spoon. You can even grind it coarsely on a stone grinder or in a mixer. Shape the mixture into cutlets. Heat 1 teaspoon oil or ghee in a pan. Fry the cutlets on medium flame until it gets cooked on both sides. Mutton cutlets are ready. 4 cutlets have around 23 grams of protein. Include these protein rich recipes in your daily diet for good health. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thanks for joining.